Hello everyone, I am Alish, your host for today. Hello everyone, I am Ethan, I'm also your host for today. And welcome to the, and welcome to the Mendeley Talk, Talk Show. It is an exciting day for us today, right Alish? Yes, you are correct Ethan, invited special guest today for our online talk show. Why don't you introduce our first guest, Ethan? Sure. Our first guest graduated as a cum laude at the University of the Philippines, Mindanao, with a degree in Bachelor of Arts in Communication, Arts, Major in Media Arts. She is currently working at the City Information Office of the City Government of Baguio as a writer photographer, videographer, and editor. She is also a web TV reporter for their local news program, Tapong News Central, and host some web TV shows. Hey, hey, the Philippines Development Communication Program. Let us welcome Ms. Liara S. Manalo. Welcome to the Mendeleev Talk Show. Thank you for ex for accepting our invitation, ma'am. Say hi to everyone on the screen. Okay, so our uh, first guest is not yet around. So, Alish and Ethan, you may proceed to introducing our second guest. Our second guest also completed her bachelor's degree in communication arts major in speech and corporate communication from the University of the Philippines in Mindanao. In 2016, as cum laude, she was also the former editor in chief of Himati, the official student publication of UP Mindanao back in her college days. She worked as a program researcher and now a segment producer at J GMA Network for the magazine show Kapuso Mo Jessica Soho. Hi, guys. Hello. Welcome, Miss Sancha Novi P. Palma. Welcome to the Mendeleev Talk Show. Thank you for accepting our invitation, ma'am. Say hi to everyone on the screen. <laughs> hi, guys. You can call me Ati uh, Sassy. Hi. This talk show would not be complete without our next guest. Please introduce to us our next guest, Alish. Sure. Our final guest took up his bachelor degree at the Siliman University in Domaguete City. He started as a journalist for Sunstar Davao in 2013. He is now the editor-in-chief of Sunstar Davao. During his day off or after work, he is an avid foodie and coffee lover which he blogs about on copydiaries.wordpress.com. You can follow him on Instagram at copydiaries. Lastly, he loves Lego, Pokemon, and the Avatar, The Last Airbender. Help me welcome our guest, Mr. Noel John F. Lumawag. Welcome to the Mendeleev Talk Show, and thank you for accepting our invitation. Sir, please wave hello to our audience on the screen. Hello, everyone. Good morning. To start the ball rolling, here's my question to Ms. Diara. How long have you been a journalist? Wonderful. For Ms. Sancha, how do you gather information? Is it easy or hard? Hey, okay. hi, guys. So... Uh, how to gather information, so depende yan sa story. So if ever yung story ay mabilis lang, uh, straight news at um, tawag ito, uh, mabilisan, medyo mabilis yan kasi uh, determined na yung mga information natin. Like for example, ang story ay about sa COVID, 
So, ang mga lalapitan natin dyan, kilala natin yung DOH, yung City Health Office, kung nasaan yung lugar na pagkukuhanan natin ng kwento, tapos yung mga mayroong COVID cases. So, alam na natin mas mabilis at may mga pangalan na. Um, yung mga mahihirap naman na mga story na paghahanapan natin ng mga information, for example, investigative stories, so kailangan natin ng research, um, uh, kailangan natin ng mga resource persons na interviewin, tapos mga case study kung tatawagin namin. Uh, hinahanap natin yon sa mga malalayong lugar, tapos hinahanap din natin yung mga mga research from old files. So, pumupunta tayo sa library, pumupunta, uh, nagtatanong tayo ng mga elders, ng mga ibang tao to gather information. So, ayun, depende sa story, kung mabilis siya or kung mahirap, doon din ang nadepende yung data gathering natin kung tawagin. Tapos, of course, yung fact-checking, kung totoo ba siya or fake news, kailangan din natin yun i-consider. Siya. How amazing that is. I still have one more question. This is for Mr. Rewell John. What pushed you to become a journalist? What pushed me to become a journalist? Well, did you guys, for the information of everyone here, actually, I never planned to become a journalist when I was still studying college. I actually wanted to become a someone who works in advertising or public relations that's more on the corporate side but somehow uh, after working my first job too is actually a manager for a coffee shop here in Davao City but eventually I found myself working at Sunstar Davao I told myself that if I really want to pursue uh, a career in advertising and public relations I had to start somewhere so I decided why not start as a reporter in San Sardavo? And then here I am right now still enjoying this job and having fun. Let us introduce our guest. Our first, I mean, our last guest graduated as Cum laude in the University of the Philippines in Mindanao with a degree in Bachelor of Arts in Communication Arts major in Media Arts. She is currently working at the City Information Office of the City Government of Tagum as a writer, photographer, videographer, and editor. She is also a web TV news reporter for the local news program Tagum News Central and hosts to some web TV shows of the city. In addition, she is currently enrolled at the University of the Philippines Open University under, under the Master of Development Communication Program. Let us welcome Ms. Diara S. Manalo. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Ciara Manalo, and I hope to have a fruitful discussion with all of you. Thank you for answering our questions. Ethan, is it time to give them the virtual stage and let them share their experiences? I see. Okay, let us start with the, with our inventive classmate, Yuan. Good morning, hello. How would you manage the stress of tight deadlines? Okay, you want, uh, to whom would you want to ask that question? How would you manage the stress of tight deadlines? Who would you want to answer your question? You want, please uh, refer it to uh, whichever guest you want, is it for um, Ate Sassy, Kuya RJ, or Ate Ziara? Ate Ziara. Okay. Please repeat your question. How would you manage the stress of tight deadlines? 
Everyone. So for us, every month we have a, we have an office meeting. So during our office meeting, we talk about our schedules, what are we gonna do or cover for the whole month, and then we assign the people who are going to cover that particular story. So in order to manage our time, we make sure that every writer has his or her schedule already jot down sa kanilang mga notes and then so as to allow them to rest, um, we assign people para hindi crowded na for this particular person, siya lang palagi. So you have to, as a member of the organization, you have to make sure that everyone has support and you don't put every, uh, all of the work on some on a, on a single person. So for me, what I like to do is uh, look at my schedule and then uh, think of ways how to make sure that that I don't over and then personally I'd like to listen to some music while I write my news article para hindi ako mas stress kung ano yung gusto ko isulat na I always think about the deadline and I make sure that even though I don't uh, write a story na last minute na dapat uh, alam mo rin ko kailan mo siya isusulat you don't have to write a particular story that is due on, let's say, on Friday, and then it's already Wednesday. Then I'll try for that particular article on this day, and then let it rest, and then look at it again on Thursday or Monday, Friday morning. So if I have to change some parts of the article, then I don't have to rush myself, and then I would, I would be worried for you. So, yeah. Breathtaking answers. Let us give the virtual stage to our elegant classmate, Sovereign. My name is Sovereign and the Mesa, and I would like to answer, and the person who I like to answer my question is Kuya John. How do you keep your personal feelings from your opinion as a journalist? Okay, uh, it's simply staying objective on certain things. When we, when we come to work as journalists, we have to set aside our personal biases, our personal um, perce uh, perceptions on things, because if we allow this personal outlooks to influence at, at, us at work, it could affect how we write the story or how we pursue the story. Sometimes instead of writing what is news, we end up, we may end up writing an opinion piece, which is not what is being asked by our news editors. What sometimes they ask for us is a news article. So we have to, it's more of a discipline. You know? There's there's no real there's no um super technique to it, but you have to be disciplined as a person and as a journalist. That when you come into work, you have to you have to tell yourself that I will set set aside my personal biases and my personal outlooks so I could come up with a good story that is very balanced and objective. Thank you. Encouraging answers. How about our shy classmate, Ashera? Do not be shy this time, fellow classmate. I'm not sure. Hello, I am Ashera, and I would like you to answer my question from Ati Sasi. Uh, how do you make your own story? Okay, so actually sa program, uh, kung saan ako nagtatrabaho, uh, we have pool of researchers na naghahanap ng story. So, nag-aantay lang ako ng assign, uh, story assignment for me from our heads and for, from the researchers kung ano yung gagawin. But for the program, we, uh, we have different kind of stories since we are a magazine show. So, if you are familiar with uh, the program, Kapuso Majestica Soho, we have food, we have investigative, 
Um, we have um, public service story, medical story. So, iba't ibang story yun every week na kailangan namin gawin. So, uh, for our case, um, wala kaming special beat na doon kami mag-focus kasi kailangan flexible, iba't ibang story yung ginagawa namin per story. So, uh, being a journalist and being in a team means having other set of people na tumutulong sa inyo para maghanap at gumawa ng story. Yeah. So, technically, hindi siya parang individual na pipiliin ko or parang individual na parang sana ito yung gagawin ko. More or less, it's a, a team effort, a a group um, initiative kung ano yung ilalatag or ipapakita namin every Sunday. So, iba-iba yun. Seven stories yun siya na ginagawa namin every week. Amazing answers. Let's have a helpful Angela. Hi everyone. My name is Sofia Angela Arpagaran and and uh, I would like to answer this question to Mr. John. And my question is, how do you organize your work? Thank you, Angela. Um, organize, for a journalist, I'm quite disorganized and also as a person. But I do my best to organize things by making... Though this is not, I know, this is not, uh, try not to do what I'm doing, but what I usually do is I make mental notes on what I have to do, but that's, the downside of that is I tend to forget things. What I usually recommend to people when they're working as journalists or when they're starting as journalists is you always have to keep notes of what you are doing or what needs to be done for the day. One thing I do I re do regularly is in my phone I jot down the before pre-COVID I jot down the I put in the calendar the events that I need to cover for for the week. But now that there's COVID and most of the events are webinars, I put all the webinars as a reminder on my phone so I would not forget to pick up those stories. Also, since I manage. I do. Ma I also manage the team. I, sometimes when I have a lot of things to do, I I make a small to-do list in my post-it note, note and put it on my computer on my monitor. So I will keep track of the deliverables that I need for the day. But most of the time, I keep mental notes. But at the same time, I also uh, ask my right hand or my. Uh, my most reliable team member to sometimes remind me of the things that I have to do. In a way, the, this um, this system for me has helped. When as the as you grow older, you will also find your own system in how you can organize things. But for now, this is my style. I keep a mental note. I jot things on my calendar on my phone. Sometimes I make a post-it, and I also ask people to remind me every now and then. Thank you. Inspiring answers. It's time for me to pick. Let's welcome our friend, Talented Lira. I would like Ate Sasi to answer my question. Where do you get the informa information about what is happening right now? Hello, hello Lira. So thank you for the question. So where do we get information? So we have different platforms where we can get so TV, social media, the internet. Then we also have the radio. So it is um, vital to know na kailangan dapat um, verified and tama yung mga sources. So for example, for the news, we have, for the TV, we have TV Patrol, um, 24 hours. Then we also have sa ANC. So alam niyo yung mga mga verified news um, channel. So we have GMA7, TV5, um, ABS-CBN, and the likes in sa, sa TV. We have also ANC. So marami tayo dyan sa TV. Sa radio, so yung mga local radio stations natin, every morning at uh, every lunchtime yata, depende sa schedule, they also give 
um, news beats. So, pa pwede rin makakuha doon ng mga verified information and verified news. For the print, we have the Inquirer. So, sa Davao, meron tayong Sunstar, meron tayong Minda, Minda News, meron pa ba? Edge Davao, meron pa. So, ayun yung mga information na pwede natin pagkuhanan. So, um, it is verified. Pinak-check yan ng mga um, journalist natin. So, ayun, pwede natin pagkuhanan yun. So, maliban sa mga news portal, we also have books. And then we also have um, websites na uh, from the academy. So, for example, yung mga kung saan kayo nagre-research sa school ninyo, uh, pwede yun gamitin din na pwede kayo makakuha ng information. So, aside from that, we can also conduct interviews. So, interviews from resource person, mga secretaries, mga people in power para makakuha ng information. Always uh, fact-check lang, always verified na hindi ito galing fake news. So, kailangan yan ng multiple source and checking for twice or thrice para malaman talaga natin kung totoo or hindi. Outstanding answers. Let's give a thunderous clap for playful Nika. Hello, my name is Nika. I would like to I would like Miss Sunshine of BP Pharma to answer my question. As a segment producer, what are your roles and responsibilities? Okay. So as a segment producer of the program, uh Kapusama Jessica Soho. Uh, ako yung in charge ng visual, so I do on field shoots. So I manage the team. May kasama kong cameraman. Ako yung nagsasabi na, Kuya, ito po yung isushoot natin. Una, interview. Isushoot natin siya na nakikipag-usap. Isushoot natin siya na nakatingin sa malayo. So ako yung kasakasama nila Kuya cameraman, tapos ako yung nagsasabi kung ano yung kukuhanan sa camera. Then second, I also do uh, the scripting. So, um, since ako yung nasa field, ako yung, nakaka ako yung directa na nakakapag-interview ng mga tao, ako yung nagsusulat ng script na sinasabi ni Ma'am Jess. So, uh, however, uh, in writing script, dumadaan yan muna sa pag-check sa mga boss and then i-check din yan ni Ma'am Jess na. So, parang dumadaan siya sa level of, of uh, authorized person para masigurado talaga na maayos yung pagkakakwento ng mga, mga segment namin every Sunday. So, maliban din sa scripting, tsaka maliban sa on-field shoot, kami rin yung nagsasuggest kung ano yung magiging flow ng story. Since kami yung first hand na nakaka-experience ng mga story. So, kami yung, o oh, pwede po ba ganito yung pagkakakwento nung, nung isang bata, for example, uh, or for example, yung, yung matanda sa bukag, hindi ko alam kung na, napanood niyo yun. So, um, first hand, we do the research so may idea na kami kung papaano ikikwento, papaano ilalatag sa script at, po, at kung anong isushoot. Then pagdating sa area, mas na-integrate namin sa so, tatawag na ako doon sa boss. Ah, Sir, po, pwede po bang ganito yung pagkakakwento na unahin natin sa bata na yung travel nila kasi mahirap ganito, ganito. So more on, ganun yung, yung trabaho ng segment producer. On-field shoot, scripting, and then doing, plotting the story. Awesome answers. Let's give the virtual stage to Shai Jenny. My question is for Ate Sasi. And my question is, is it difficult for you to gather information during these days? Ah, okay. So, during these days, especially that we are in the middle of a pandemic, it's very quite hard to gather information. Uh, very limited yung, yung galaw namin. Kasi unang-una, bawal lumabas at uh, may mga restrictions every um, location na pinupuntahan namin. Um, 
So, ang ginagawa namin, we utilize uh, internet and then we utilize calling persons, um, people in authority na nasa area. Para lang talaga less interaction, face-to-face interaction kasi to avoid na rin the transmission of the, the virus. So, ang mahirap lang din dito maliban sa every thing ay nasa social media na so hindi mo na talaga alam kung ano yung totoo at hindi. Ayun, same sa sinabi ko kanina, multiple checking, multiple um, fact check, kumbaga, para masigurado lang na tama yung information na nakupuha. Um, it's quite hard but parang challenge na rin ito sa mga journalists this time sa pandemic na kailangan um, totoo, tama at accurate pa rin yung mga information na naisishare namin sa mga tao. Perfection. Let's welcome Talkative Damshi. Hi everyone, my name is My name is Damshi. How do you manage your your work? Your work or your work from um Kuya RJ. How do I manage my work? Is that right? Okay. So, uh, for the team, I as, as I said earlier, aside being a journalist, I also manage a a whole team which is composed of um, which is composed of reporters, editors, graphic artists, and the social media team. So, so with each team, the management style is different because. The personality and the dynamics of each team is also different. So I have to handle each team with care and also understanding where they are coming from. Aside from that, when it comes to to uh, managing on a personal level or, or on a one-on-one -on -one level, like let's say somebody is not doing their job properly or somebody is not um, helping the team properly, I have to sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, which is part of my uh, leadership style where I sit down with them somewhere private and then we can discuss how they could improve or where they need to improve or what are the problems. I also um, organize monthly get together. It's like a town hall meeting where the whole team will come together, just discuss the issues, how and how we could resolve them. That is how I manage my team. And also when um, giving assignments to the reporters or to the, to the social media team, I also do that. I start that in the morning. I try to find stories that they could write. And we have a group group chat for different functions. So there I, I post my assignments for the reporter, for the editors, and also for the social media team. Thank you. Interesting. Let's welcome Adventurous Eunice. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eunice de la Cruz, and I would like Ate Zaraya to answer my question. Do, do journalists ask questions to gather information? Yes. Do journalists ask questions to gather information? Yes, actually, it's very uh, no, important part of gathering your information. So, first things first, pag inassign ka ng news desk nyo for a particular story, you have to prepare what are the initial questions you would like to ask during an interview. So, when you get there, you have to identify who the resource person you're going to talk to and what are those questions na tatanong mo. And then, uh, there are times also that there are certain people na you're not sure. I, there are certain people na mag attend na particular event and then they would not be part of your research there. Then and then you can get the opportunity to talk to them. Then you can ask impromptu questions. Pero there are also times that uh, interviewees won't tell you, I would tell you, na please don't quote me on this and stuff like that. Then you find another people to talk to, to gather a particular uh, information. 
So you have to be flexible as a reporter, especially if you have a deadline to beat. And then you don't have to strictly follow what you already wrote down sa uh, notes mo, especially sa mga questions mo, because you can always ask for a follow up. And then it would, and, and and then it's important to have that free flowing conversation, especially kung hindi naman siya uh, ganun ka fixed na kind of article. In that way, you gather more information. Thank you. Thank you. Great. How about our friendly Umra? I want to ask this question to Kuya John. How long should you work? How long do I work? Uh, for most journalists, I think, uh, I'm, I'm not sure with uh, Miss Jara and Sassy, but we at print, we're quite flexible with our time. Ako personally, I start my job at 10 a.m. Since I also manage things, so I have to start early. So I start at 10 a.m. and usually would end my work at around 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. However, when I was still working as a reporter, my only deliver deliverable back then was to submit a story by 3 p.m. So when I was still a young reporter, I, what I would do is start my work as early as 7 a.m. I start writing some of my stories at 7 a.m., go to my coverage at around 8 a.m. or 10 a.m., depending on where I need to go. And I would be done by 3 p.m. Usually after 3 p.m., I'm quite free. However, being um, since I get bored easily, I would still find ways to do my work. So I would go and visit. I would try to find, make it productive until 5 p.m. Sorry, until 5 p.m. So I would visit offices, set up interviews, try to find other stories. And that has helped me become efficient in my work daily. But if you ask me what is the average time I work on a daily basis, now with, with, work, with us working at home, um, usually we would, I would work around six hours or five hours a day. So, but that's also me being trying to, if I could do it at a shorter time and spend other time to, be, to, to have time for myself and find other things that I could do, then I could shorten my work hours. Aside from that, short, being short, allowing me to shorten my work hours, I could also encourage the team to become efficient. So we've also devised a way to become more efficient, to work much more faster and more effective without uh, sacrificing our con content and our quality. So in six hours, five hours, usually that's our work time. Thank you. Wow. Let's have joyful I. This question is for Kuya RJ. What is the difficult situation did you encounter? Okay, one of the most difficult situations that we would encounter at work uh, is dealing with um, people who, how, how can I put it? Because there are some times we come out with a story. And some people are sometimes not happy with that we came out with that story. Despite getting their side, despite getting their, their, uh, their, their comments on those issues, sometimes they are not happy because they feel that they were not able to properly give their side. So, of course, we had to do interviews again and stuff like that. But most of the time, yeah, that's what's, what is challenging with their, when some sources or some people who are mentioned in the story are not happy with the story. So what we could do as reporters then, just to to end the end the problems and all, we have to get their side. Okay, so you want you have and you have a comment on this article. Do you want to talk? Do you want to be interviewed? Because we we're fine that we could interview you. So yes, they want to interview. Yes, they want a story. So we'll write their story. <laughs> we'll write their side because of, also our job as a journalist is that. We have to present all sides of the story. If one side feel that they were underrepresented, then and they come to you to because they want to to be to voice out their concerns, to voice out their their stance on that issues. Then of course, as a journalist, you have to cater to them, even though sometimes you do not agree to what they're saying. 
but that is the essence of the news which is having or having both sides of the story uh, on the platform and being read by people thank you thank you let's have happy jamie shall we This question is for Kuya RJ. How do you follow a news story? Like, do you schedule interviews to involve people? Yeah, for follow-up stories, we do schedule interviews. We would call up our, uh, we would call up the sources and ask them, uh, do you have updates on these issues? Sometimes, what we, what I would do is, because mo many are very on digital right now, and it's easier to reach out to some of our sources through messenger or through email, I would just fire questions to them using those, the, the email or the messenger. I would say, hey, do you have updates on these certain issues? Also, I have to, if I have a news and then the source said a, gave a specific timeline, I also follow up the story based on that timeline. Let's say in five months, they are set to complete the construction. Then after three months, I would set a schedule with them and ask them, uh, how how is the project doing and what are the updates on those projects so it's basically being aware of the time since you 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 met with the source and also setting a schedule with them thank you um, Gaming answers let's have explorative james before james asks questions can we go back because we only have less than one minute. Okay, everyone, see you in a bit. Um, we'll just go back. See you. Okay, since James is not yet around, Alish, you may ask another classmate. We'll just go back with James when he is already in our thinking zone. Okay, let's have playful Krishan. My name is Krishan and I would like Kuya Rowell to answer my question. My question is, what motivates you to be on that field and is it hard to be on that job? I'll first answer your second question. Is it hard to be in this job? Yes, it's hard because there are a lot of things that you have to consider when you're a journalist. You have to be, be careful with your story. You have to research a lot. You have to understand a lot of things. But at the same time, what keeps me motivated in this job is I am able to write the stories of the community that I am in. I am able to write the stories of Davao City, which are not being covered by um, the bigger newspapers like the Philippine Daily Inquirer or Philippine Star or Manila Bulletin because their stories are mostly focused on the larger scale or on the national scale. Here at Sansar Davao, what we love to write about is the stories of our community. What are the stories that we can find in, let's say, in El Rio? where I stay, or what stories can I find in Marilog? What stories are hidden in Cabagio, in Agdao? In this large area of Davao City, there are different stories that are worth pursuing. And it is our job as community journalists to look for those stories and let the people know about it. That's what keeps me motivated in my job. Aside from that, I, I enjoy, I truly enjoy my job. Uh, I this is one of the this is my job i've been to let's say four jobs since graduating a a a manager at a cafe i worked in the government for a year then i also worked for a power plant then i worked as a reporter now i'm i'm back also as a journalist and editor-in-chief and the job has been fun i get to meet a lot of people um i get to learn a lot i think learning is what one of the things that i enjoy the most i i get to learn about um, let's say a lot of things like starting your own business, uh, how to manage your finances properly, things that you don't learn at school, but when the things that you learn when you when you're an adult. There's also 
things that I get to learn from different industries, like understanding how how the internet works, why our internet is slow, well, how what can we do when then, or um, let's say stories about uh, the environment, things like that. As a journalist, you are exposed to so many topics that it's fun to just sit down and listen to the people and learn from them and grow from those experiences. It is also through this job that I learned to love coffee before being a uh before after after being a journalist, I get to meet a lot of people who are also passionate about coffee and they taught me how what real coffee tastes like and did you know that coffee actually has different flavors if you are if you buy them from the farmers? Like some coffee have hints of strawberry, some coffee had have hints of orange. So I get to learn those things from from my job. And also I get to travel every now and then. I've been to several places and it, each time I travel I also learn new things. So I think the job is fun. I get to write the stories of the community I in. I am in it. It's just something that I love doing, and that keeps me what that keeps me motivated throughout the years. Thank you. Motivating. Go to the virtual stage, Happy Amber. Hello, my name is Amber, and I would like Ate Ziara to answer my question, please. Do you make your own news story in your own words? Okay, we'll try to um, ask that question. Amber, can you please just save your question for later when Ata Ziara comes back? And so, Alish, um, maybe you can give uh, James the time now to ask his question. Okay. Before we get to Playful Taylor, let's give James the virtual stage. Hi, I am James. My, my question is, I will ask it to Atizia. What people will you talk to so that you can find information about the event? Our season. Oh, I'm gonna ask the question again. What people will you talk to so that you can find information about the event or season? I will ask my question to Ate Ziara. Miss Ziara is not here yet. Let's go back to Playful Taylor. James? We can go back to your question when Miss Yara gets here. Okay. My name is Taylor. I would like my question to be answered by Tita Ate Seisi. Yes, Taylor, you may ask your question. Um, please uh, share your question. My question is, how would you handle a hostile or uncooperative un interviewee? Okay, so how to handle a problematic interviewee or case studies? So, um, First, kapag kaganoon, you talk to them in a nice way. Kahit na nagagalit sila, kahit na ayaw ka nilang pansinin, or nagtatago sila, as much as possible, talk to them politely. 
So you address to them, uh, you address to them respectfully too para ma-feel nila na um ma-feel nila na sincere yung yung intention mo sa kanila. So um we always keep in mind that um nadadaan ang bawat interviewee or yung mga case study uh, sa pakikipag-usap ng maayos. Um, if ever hindi talaga sila papayag, we can meet as sa case kasi ng TV, for example, uh, kailangan talaga namin yung interviewee. We make um kumaga barter or arrangements with the interviewee. For example, they do not want their face to be seen in the TV. So we told them if it's okay not to let their face, uh, ibablur yung face nila or ikakot yung face nila for their privacy. So may ibang interviewee na pumapayag. Pero may iba naman na wala talaga. So in that case, um, we tried to, to ask someone to take their place na parang credible din, kumbaga parang kakilala ba nila or family member nila na sila na lang ang magsalita on behalf of them. So, parang we always make sure to find alternatives um, tsaka options as talking heads since kailangan natin yung interviewee. Uh, if ever yung interviewee ay hindi naman vital sa story, we can let them go. We, we are just going to thank them for their time and then Ayun. Huwag lang mainit ang ulo. Ayun siya. Always, always uh, be patient sa mga interviewee kasi kailangan sila. Awesome. Lastly, Artistic Monique. The reporter I'm going to pick today and to answer my question is Ate Ziara. Good, good morning, Ate Ziara. My name is Monique Paula Bibinondo. My question for you to answer is, what were your biggest challenges on being a news reporter? And was it hard being one? Okay, so hi Muni, thank you for that question. So, um, is it hard to be a journalist? ayo pa interview tapos may mga uh, tao na kailangan pang hanapin to verify your data and then of course in my part I do the writing and I also do the reporting so it's hard to write because you have to write it and then you have to deliver it so there are two components there that are actually different so you have um, uh, what's your another question, Yale? Your first one. What were your biggest challenges on becoming a news reporter? And so, yun, uh, those are the things that are that that are I encountered and biggest challenge. Siguro wala naman as long as you like what you're doing and you're really persevering to the necessary data that you need. Um, siguro lang yung mga challenges, especially pag may mga changes sa schedule, especially pag meron kang uh, interviewee na kailangan mong hanapin pa or may mga ganun changes. So, kailangan mo talaga i-contact sila if you have to remember that. Also, to to um, to write your questions ahead of time and para hindi ka review, hindi ka nakakalimot, mga ganun. So, yun. Wala na mong masyado as long as you like what you're doing. Since Miss Ziara is here, let's carry on with James and Amber's questions. Let's start with James. Hi, I am James Matthew P. Suazo, and I will ask my question to Ate Ziara Manel. What will you put to so that you can find information about the event or season? Who I look for? 
So, for example, when we when our news desk uh, assign us for a particular story, we times they tell us who the research person could be or the author. You have to have the initiative as well. So if you uh, if you already know who the who the person is, who is the uh, focal person? that you need to talk beforehand or before pasabihin sa yun na news desk mo. And what we usually do, we also build a relationship with different people. So for example, in our localities of this particular offices, so that when we gather information from them, uh, uh, it would be easier na kasi we, we already have their contact numbers tapos um, they already know us as reporters. So it, it's not hard anymore to, uh, uh, to gather. John. Aside from that, um, always remember that you have to double check your facts. So hindi lang siya magagaling sa isang... For if meron siyang office na... Uh, partner, dapat kukunin mo rin yung side ng other office. So, para kumpleto yung mga data mo. So, you have to cross-check over and over again before releasing or writing your article. Yeah. Yan lang. Okay. Let's carry on with our last, but definitely not least, Amber. Hello. My name is Amber. I would like Ate Ziara to answer my question, please. Do you make your own news story in your own words? Okay, I think um, Ate Ziar is having a technical problem. Okay, um, maybe uh, one of the guests can answer your question, Amber. Let's try another uh, guest, perhaps, before uh, Ate Ziar comes back. Yes, Amber. Um, please choose another guest because I think um, Atin Ziara uh, got disconnected with us. So please choose another one. Amber? I would like um, Ate Sanchia. Hello. Okay lang na paulit yung tanong. It's okay to repeat the question. Do you make your own new story in your own words? So, for our case in uh, TV, TV broadcasting, so we make our stories in our own words. Uh, however, we have practiced and we have trained na in how to write the way our host talks. So, it's Ma'am Jessica. So, pinag-aaralan na namin kung paano yung conversation, tsaka paano magsalita, mag-deliver si Ma'am Jessica Soho. So, it takes um, a lot of time to master the, the tone of voice of Ma'am Jess. Um, however, pag matagal ka na sa, or matagal ka na siguro sa program, na-adapt mo na yung the way she speaks. So, it, it's not hard. So, we also use um, some word, for example, si case namin, millennial, makabago, we incorporate it also in our script in our news writing, para in a way, mabibigyan din ng kumbaga, um, new new image or parang bagong bagong take yung pagsasalita or pag-deliver ng host namin na si Ma'am Jessica. So parang yun yung kumbaga, process ng pagsusulat ng script namin. Well, different naman yan siya sa case ng, ng when, when, when we write about news, straight news, or editorial magazine. So, there are different kind of tones, different kind of wordings na ginagamit. Pero usually, kapag kaganoon, pinag-aaralan talaga para maka-adapt sa mga viewers at sa medium na ginagamit mo as a journalist. My 
classmates sure did prepare amazing questions. Do you agree with me, our special guests? Our guests also shared wonderful insight to us this morning. With that, we send you our deepest thanks. Guest, you made us all happy and inspired today. You were able to share insights that we surely treasure and hopefully inspire us to take journalism as our track in the future. Let us give our loudest claps and warmest smiles to our guests, Ms. Yara S. Manalo, Ms. Sancha Novi P. Palma, and Ms. Ru Mr. Ruel John F. Lumawag. I am Cheerful Ethan. And I am Articulate Alish. Thank, Thank you, you and, and see, you see you in the next, the next Mental Leave talk show. talk show. Hey, so children, um, that ends our talk show. Again, we give our uh, loudest claps. No? Although our guests will not be able to listen to your loudest claps, booming claps, children, uh, we thank them for uh, sharing their time with us. Especially now that they are also doing their jobs, uh, they were able to uh, share to us their uh, precious time. No? Okay, so um, just for the information of our guests, after this talk show, actually the output of grade 5 and grade 6 is to write a news report. Because last week and this week and the next week will be uh, spent for our news writing. So again, we are very grateful and blessed that you were able to share us, your insights, children, do you agree? Show, show to the screen, children, your communication tools. Do you agree that we had a good morning today? Yes, 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 yes. It's a thumbs up for all of our children. Again, okay, it's a thumbs up. So again, just like what you one flashes on your screen now, we thank you. And so we say goodbye to Ate Ziara, Ate Sassy, and Kuya RJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you too. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for answering our questions. Thank you. Okay.